Okay, part two of solubility curves and the solubility of substances. This is to do a supersaturation. Uh, we d discussed a little bit about supersaturation, kind of just explain what it was um, in the first part of this um, podcast. Now we're going to give a bit more detail and show you how supersaturation actually looks. Um, a really funky experiment that can be done in class as well. So what a supersaturated solution is, is if you had a um, saturated solution and it was cooled down slowly and not disturbed, what happens is instead of all the, um, all the solute recrystallizing straight away, what happens is it becomes a supersaturated solution where you have an unstable mix of solute and solvent. And when you disturb that unstable mix, what happens is all the solute that should be out of solution starts to crystallize all at once, and it looks really funky. Now, there's two ways to start the recrystallization. One is to plant a seed crystal, so where you get another crystal of what your supersaturated solution is, dump that in there, and it starts to recrystallize. The other one is just to simply disturb it and just to make a bit of a, um, a little knock it a little bit or touch it somehow, and what happens is you'll see that all crystallizes out. Here's an example of a supersaturated solution. So what's happened is this glass has been heated and obviously they have a bit of sodium acetate in there. Um, sodium acetate is very, very soluble. So even with this tiny amount of water, it can dissolve a really large amount of solute. Um, as you increase it, you dissolve more. So what they've done is they've increased the temperature and had a lot of sodium acetate dissolve. And then they've cooled it down. They've been really careful about how they cooled it down and they cooled it down really slowly. So what you can see is when they start to disturb it, you'll see that it starts to recrystallize. So all this is a solute that is recrystallizing straight away. And um, obviously there they're showing you that it is a solid. And here we have it being well, taken out, and you can see this is the sodium acetate there. They've done a few other experiments, um, these guys who made this video. Um, here it is. Here's the, um, well, it's called hot ice because what's happening is as they're pouring it out, um, even though it's room temperature, it looks kind of like ice, but it's, it's not ice, it's sodium acetate. It's a super saturated solution. When they pour it out, it hits the... Um, it hits the ground or hits the um, plate here, and that's the disturbing part of it uh, where it gets disturbed and it starts to recrystallize. As you can see here, um, just by leaving it, um, it will start to recrystallize itself completely. And here's some even better ones here where you're um, seeing it recrystallize as they've poured it as well. So these are super saturated solutions where um, they're unstable and they can recrystallize all at once. Now, interesting fact about these solutions, um, the recrystallization is an exothermic process. So that means when they start to recrystallize, heat is actually given out from this reaction. So the recrystallization, as soon as they tap it, or as soon as you see these guys here um, being recrystallizing, heat is given out from the, um, the system. What this means is these guys can be used in um, a lot of areas. They can be used in heat packs, um, and that's what they are used for. Um, in sports, when you have um, an injury in sport, you, you get a heat pack. What it is, it's a um, super saturated solution, and what you do is you crack it, or you, um, you bend it, or you disturb it somehow, and what happens is, slowly, we see a recrystallization happen within that heat pack, and it gives out heat, so um, you can warm your, your injury that you might have. Um, what they can do is because of the nature of the fact that they're super saturated solutions is that once you've used that heat pack, all you need to do is then re-dissolve the solute and let, leave it alone and you'll form the super saturated solution again and you can reuse these heat packs quite often. Another place where super saturated solutions were used in terms of their exothermic nature was on long train trips back in the olden days. Instead of having heaters, what they used to have is these um, canisters, like metal canisters, where they had solutions of supersaturated solutions. Or, and what they'll do is they'll, when they finish their train ride, they'll take these supersaturated solutions, they'll put them in hot water, dissolve it to make it a supersaturated solution, and then they'll go through the train and put them underneath seats or underneath um, areas which would get cold. As the train would go along, what would happen is the train would knock about and you'd get it disturbing the solution. 
And what would happen is the um, solute would recrystallize and thus you'd have your very own supersaturated solution heater. Um, so that's how we can use supersaturation. It's a, um, a very good experiment. It's a fun experiment to do. Um, if you're doing VCE, um, you should probably do it in class. Or if you don't, ask your teacher to do it because it's quite a fun experiment to do. That's supersaturation. Let's have a look at what we should have learned from the last two um, things. We should be able to apply our solubility curve knowledge. So things that we should be able to do from last video, we should be able to explain why a hot bottle of Coke would fill up a lot when it's opened. We should be able to explain why the outflow from a power station is, shouldn't be put straight into a river system to do with dissolved oxygen. And we should be able to explain the feedback relationship between carbon dioxide and the atmosphere. We should also be able to, from this video, explain how a heat pack works and use the terms supersaturated, crystallized, and an exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction, remember what I said before, it's one that gives out heat. All right, here's um, what you should be able to do anyway. You use the keywords in the sentence. So um, the keywords that were at the start of the first video, um, use them in a sentence. Explains how solubility changes with the temperature, obviously for gases and for solids. Um, you should know the differences or as an increase in temperature, what happens to a gas or the solubility of a gas? What happens to the solubility of a solid? You should be able to use a solubility curve. So do some calculations based upon a solubility curve. And obviously that was in the last um, video you saw as well. Explain what a supersaturated solution is. This shouldn't be a saturated solution. is a supersaturated solution, um, how it's created and how they can be used. And also use your knowledge of solubility curves to explain natural phenomena. So things like um, the, the natural feedback mechanism in global warming. Explain the idea behind that. Explain um, why hot water being put straight into um, from a factory into a river system might kill some fish. Explain all that type of stuff. Textbook references here, we use the Heinemann 1 textbook, um, textbook questions. There's also a quiz on Edmodo, which you can join using this URL here, and it's called Solubility Curves, so you should be able to do that as well. Um, most of it's doing calculations on solubility curves. Hopefully that gives you an idea about how we can use solubility curves and supersaturated solutions. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll chat to you with the next video, which will be about molarity and concentration in terms of the number of moles.